I'm Johanna, you my dog and books, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a little video called Get to Know Me Bookish Edition, which is utterly inspired by the wonderful Jen's Reading Life. If you don't follow her already, check her out. I'll tag her down below. So in this edition, I wanted to show a little bit of Get to Know Me just with the range of books I read. I've got a selection. <laughs> of books to talk you through. Um, I think one thing to know about me as a reader, um, I've read for many years. I read from probably a little girl going to the lo my local library and getting all these free books. I love getting all the free books. I discovered Stephen King and Dean Kuntz when I was about 10. So I went to the dark side early on. And I did all the usual, I read the like Secret Seven, um, Sweet Valley High, all of that. Uh, and then got into my sort of late teens till about mid late twenties and reading took a bit of a back burner while I was at university and um, doing all the stuff that you normally do that kind of takes you away from reading. And then it was when I joined the book club. Mm. Maybe my late teens, not late teens, late twenties, I think. Um, a book group that is still going, still been going for years. And I'd been itching to join a book group for ages. And someone what I worked with uh, was in one, but she was leaving to go and move to London. And I was like, can I be dead cheeky and ask if it's possible for me to join the book group? Uh, anyway, so I went knowing no one. I've now known them all for years. I love them all to bits. And the first book I read for that was We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. Uh, and man, that blew me away. That is a book that if you've never read it, it is dark. It's jaw dropping. And it's all about nature versus nurture. Um, that I hadn't read a book like that in a long time. That got me back into reading actually. Um, and then we met every month for them. We've read loads of books. We'll take a choice, take a turn in picking books. Um, we haven't met probably in the last four or five months, just because there's been lots of life stuff happening to everybody. Um, but we're catching up next week on Zoom, just as a wee catch up, and then see and um, getting back together again in April. So looking forward to that. Anyway, that's kind of what my reading journey has been like. Now the books I like, well, I used to be Stephen King, Dean Koontz, used to be into really those kind of books and thrillers and that was about it until I got into the book group. And that really taught me and opened my eyes to a whole range of genres. So I am a very eclectic reader. I will pretty much read anything as long as it's not too spicy because I'm totally PG when it comes to romance. I'm also used to read romance but I'm not really a big romance reader anymore um, at all. Um, I think my change, my tastes just changed quite a lot. I can't do high fantasy or like hard sci-fi because my brain can't compute it. <laughs> I have tried um, and I really love horror, but I think the older I get, I'm starting to see my limitations of how how dark some of that, or, or how graphic some of that horror is. I, those are the only kind of genres I don't read. And saying that, if someone went, oh my god, I know you don't like this genre, but you will love this, I'll give it a go. So in no particular order, because I've just grabbed some from my shelves to talk you through some of my favourite authors or some of the types of genres I like reading. Um, It'd be great if you could let me know in the comments if there's any books here that actually you've read or you like the author or you like the sound of. So a big, big reader of non-fiction. I love non-fiction, all of essay collections. And here's an example. So at the moment I'm reading an essay collection called No Offence But and it's about having meaningful conversations for change. Um, and it's written by a gender activist, a gender equality activist. Well, it's collated because um, there's many contributors, gender equality activist Gina Martin. Um, and on the same sort of theme of that, I love anything that is about diversity and quality and inclusion when it comes to non-fiction or just generally in fiction. It's great to see diversity. This is a fun, I say fun one. 
this is a really good one and it's got it's an essay collection called feminists don't wear pink and other lies amazing women on what the f word means to them so it's actually it's um edited curated by scarlett curtis who's actually the daughter of film director richard curtis who did four weddings and a funeral notting hill and the likes um that's just a random fact for you this witherspoon blurb is it brilliant hysterical truthful and real so you've got actually charlie craggs contributes to this who's in the book that I'm at, um, Emma Watson, that actor, Olivia Perez, Zoe Sugg. There's a whole mix and that it's just a phenomenal book. Highly recommend it. So I love non-fiction. I love non-fiction that tells me about people's lives. For example, as you'll see in my reading vlogs, like sneak peek. I got this from a wee free library the weekend. So I like do I do like reading autobiographies. So I read like, not even a Barbara Streisand fan, but I'd say that about Elton John. I read Elton John's and loved it. Hear any noises around me, my dishwasher's on and the OH is upstairs having a bath. Anyway, talking non-fiction, but this was, um, I don't even know, I think a friend recommended this to me. It's by Ali Brosh and it's called Hyperbole and a Half. And it is literally one of the funniest books I've ever read. It's a graphic novel. But it's all done by Ali Brosh herself. So it's hilarious, story, hilarious stories about life's mis mishaps by the creator of the cult blog Hyperbole and a Half Blogspot.com. This is a book I wrote because I wrote it. I had to figure out what to put up on the back cover to explain what it is. I tried to write a long third person summary that would imply how great the book is and also sound vaguely authoritative, like maybe someone who isn't me wrote it. But I soon discovered that I'm not a I'm not sneaky enough to pull it off convincingly. So I decided to make a list of the things that are in the book. Pictures, words, stories about things that happened to me, stories about things that happened to other people because of me. Eight billion dollars, asterisk. These are lies, perhaps I have underestimated my sneakiness. Stories about dogs and the secret to eternal happiness. Also, these are lies. <laughs> this just gives you, honestly, this good. um, Ali Brosh, uh, I think in real life, um, had significant mental health challenges um, and went off the radar for a number of years and then I think came back with this book or there is another one called, I'm looking over at because it's on my shelf, Solutions and Other Problems, um, but it's called Unfortunate Situations, Flawed Coping Mechanisms, Mayhem, Mayhem and Other Things That Happened. Honestly, I defy anyone to pick up this book and not literally laugh out loud at the stuff that Ali's uh, had happen in her life but also how she manages it she talks a lot about anxiety and depression um it's phenomenal so already a bit non-fiction but something that kind of brings humor to light now this one right everyone on the bookytube on bookstagram book talk wherever you consume your bookie content I suspect has heard, if not read, of Taylor Jenkins Reid. I think I discovered her based on... This is a cameo from my other half. Would you like to stay in that clip or do you want me to edit you out? That means he's okay if I, if I don't. Would you broke a coat hanger? I don't know what's going on. There's tools involved. I thought he was having a bath. Anyway, I got onto the train of Taylor Jenkins Reid because of Bookstagram, I think it was. And this was the first of hers I wrote, read. And the hype is real. It is phenomenal. It's one of my favorite books. I would seriously buy it for many people. And I think there's an adaptation coming. So they better do a good job. I did read Daisy Jones and the Six. It wasn't really for me, but it was more because I wasn't really that interested in reading about bands generally. But Carrie Soto is back is another one that I absolutely love. So I don't know what this comes under. Historical fiction? Yeah, so see books that have strong female characters, have diversity. Generally, I'm good for that. 
talking about that, leads right into Lessons in Chemistry. It's one of my favourite books of 2021. 2021. Uh, I got it on Night Net Gallery originally, and then when it came out in hardback, I bought it. Um, I think the cover, the UK cover, is quite different to the US cover. Um, who's the, Elizabeth Salt is the main character in this nominal feminist story about women in the 50s and 60s. She's a scientist, but clearly isn't getting taken seriously. There's other, there's other things that I don't want to be a spoiler on it. Phenomenal, if you've not read it, believe the hype, go in. Hi, he's hiding behind me. Um, then, well, actually, while we're talking about some strong female women, I'm going to talk about one of my new favourite authors. Like, I will literally read and buy anything she writes. It's Tiffany McDaniel. And this was my favourite read of 2023 on the savage side. <sighs> I don't even know how it, like... I can't listen to One Way or Another by Blondie now and not think about this book. If you know, you know, and if you don't, read it so you can find out. But I'll read the kind of synopsis. Um, six women, mothers, daughters, sisters, gone missing. Arcade and Daffodil are twin sisters born one minute apart. With their fiery red hair and thirst for an escape, they form an unbreakable bond, nurtured by their grandmother's story. Together they disappear into their imagination and forge a world where a patch of grass reveals an archaeologist's dig. The smoke emerging from the local paper mill becomes the dust rising from the wild ho horses galloping deep beneath the earth. An abandoned 1950s convertible transforms into a time machine that they can take them anywhere. So they're kind of disappearing from their lives. But no matter how hard they try, Ark and Daffy can't escape the generational ghosts that haunt their family. And so left to fend for themselves in the shadows of the rural Ohio town, the two sisters cling tight together. Drawing from the one, drawing from the true story of women killed in Chillicothe, Ohio, acclaimed novelist and poet, her writing is beautiful. Tiffany McDaniel has written a moving literary testament and fearless elegy. Is that how you say that? Elegy. Elegy? Elegy. E-L-E-G-Y. For missing women everywhere. This is utterly stunning and because I love this so much, this was actually her book that came out last year. It's not, not too long. I think it came out in paperback in January. But because of that, this was the book she wrote before this called Betty. I managed to track it down in hardback because like, see when you've got hardbacks of an author and you just want to like carry on with the hardbacks. I actually prefer paperbacks but it's a thing. A thing. And this one is written um it's inspired by her mum actually. Uh A girl comes of age against a knife. So begins the story of Betty Carpenter. Born in a bathtub in 1954 to a Cherokee father and white mother, Betty is a six of eight siblings inhabit inhabiting a world of poverty and violence. A heartbreaking yet magical story, Betty is a punch in the gut of a novel full of the crushing cruelty of human nature and the redemptive power of words. So this is absolutely um, based on the life of her mother, Betty. Tiffany McDaniel's on Instagram if you ever want to check her out. Um, so this is getting read before summer because I love this so much. So yeah, I think you can get a vibe that I really like strong women. <laughs> and to continue that vibe, Kristen Hanna. I will read any book she writes. I first read Kristen Hanna because of Book Group, because someone in Book Group chose The Great Alone as one of her reads. And because oh, of the sometimes the covers look a bit like, I don't know. How do you say it? Like, no offence, because I used to, I read Daniel Steele back in the day, but like, it looks quite light and not like there's so much depth depth to the book basically the cover i picked up i was like i don't know what i was going in to read blew me away the great alone is powerful and amazing still one of my favorite chris and hannah's that followed by the nightingale because we also read that for a book group and so um pretty much try and buy any chris and I. so i've got the women i'm going to be reading that soon um this one i read last summer was it the summer before? 
It's set in the Dust Bowl era, which I'd heard the phrase, never knew anything about it. Strong, amazing women. There's always big emotions going on in these. And I'm not a big cry at a book, but I welled up. So if you, like Chris and Hannah, I'll read any, any of their books. Um, another amazing female author who I love because of this book and have now read Sundial and have The Looking Glass Sound still to read is Catriona Ward. Her ability to write a book that is an utter mind melt where in this one in particular I had no idea what was going on for three quarters of it and then sorry that's my dishwasher <laughs> mm, just in case you thought it was my stomach because that'd be weird um this is utterly mind-blowing if you've not read this and you like dark twisted thrillers pick it up don't go in reading anything about it I still love this to this day even though like when I when I've recommended it to a few people they'll get back in touch and like I really don't know what's going on. I'm like, it's okay. No one does. And then your jaw drops at the end. So yeah, but this is where it takes me from. Maybe a mix of contemporary historical fiction, non-fiction about strong women to the classic king. I'll say these two are one of my favorites. Shining, yeah, I just held up. But King, King, King. I read the Stephen King a month. Um, sometimes I read new ones, sometimes I'm doing rereads. Salem's Law, I actually only read for the first time a couple of years ago. It's phenomenal. This urge is on sort of dark, haunting, gothic horror. Pet Symmetry is just pure horror. Terrifying horror, in my opinion. Um, but he also does write amazing thrillers. So 11, 22, 63. Is a, f is, an outstand is a big book, but it is outstanding. It's not horror. It is a great thriller. The Mercedes series, a brilliant thriller series. So yeah, I'm still I'm still devoted to Mr. King. I read Holly, which came out last year. Um, that was basically about one of the main characters from the Mr. Mercedes tr trilogy, and it was Chef's Kisses. Now, books I've discovered, I'd say, in the last four years, maybe, Riley Sager. He can churn out a thriller that never ceases to have me page turning and jaw dropping and just be like, twists my getting. This was the first one of his I read. It's Home Before Dark. It's still my favourite. Also, look at this cover. Still my favourite. This is very much a kind of haunted house, book within a book, thriller story. Love it. I was still, if anyone said, oh, where should I start with Riley Sager? This is it. But then I've got his new one, one the only one left still to read. That's on my book, 24 books of 2024. And then of the similar guys, still, still talking about male authors here. Um, Again, I think I discovered this author. He's a horror author, the more sort of satirical comedy horror, and that is Grady Hendrix. Firstly, this cover. It's like an old VHS cover. My, fr my Best Friend's Exorcism is one of my favourites. It's got 1980s or 90s, 1980s nostalgia 80s like southern book clubs guide to slain vampires phenomenal lots of social commentary on uh women and the patriarchy in that one that's set in the 90s this one's set in the 80s so as a, as a kid that grew up well i was born in 76 but grew up in a lot in this 80s um this had really good nostalgia vibes it is as it says to do with an exorcism um, I just love how much he packs in a bit a full ho horror and one minute it can make me go and then the next I can genuinely laugh out loud oh my, my stack's getting quite big I'll let you move it and oh I think that is all if any other book
I'm sure there's authors, there'll be hundreds of authors, hundreds, there'll be lots of authors that I've not mentioned that I absolutely love. But examples of where I love reading and learning about new cultures and voices from across the world. An example of is Persopolis by Marjane Satrapi. Um, this is actually it's a graphic novel and it was turned into an animation which um, was phenomenal. It's a story of a childhood and a story of a return. Um, Persopolis is a stylish and clever moving weapon of mass destruction. So it's basically about Satrapi's childhood in Iran and growing up as an Iranian girl. It's beautiful. It's, it's wonderful and poignant and funny. And in the same instance, this is a book which I've not read yet, but it's on my shelf. Our Women on the Ground, Arab Women Reporting from the Arab World. Um, again, I just love hearing different own voices. Uh, so this is a book I want to get to this year. I think it's an, I think it's an essay collection. Um, I read a book, actually, I got from the library called This Arab is Queer, which was an essay collection um, from queer Arabs telling their story of being queer and Arab, either in their current Arab country or if they've moved and, and their impact on that, which was brilliant, was so good. So yeah, overall, that was a little bit of getting to know me, bookish edition, which is just generally the kind of books I like to read, sitting in a different position today. And then over there is Patty hanging half out her bed. And Lucy is literally, oh, she's on a beanbag right next to me, see her. She's literally snoring. So yeah, I suppose if there's any books that I've read and you've liked the sound of, let me know if you're going to pick any up. Or if there's any book that you've seen that is the kind of book I like, I'm very eclectic in my reading style, give me some recommendations. I'm here for it. And also if you do pick up any or you have read any, let me know. Anyway, thanks as always for watching um, and I'll see you again soon in another book chat.